next on Maximus. In the fall of 2014, just a few months after a Malaysian Air Boeing 777 flight MH370 disappeared somewhere in the Indian Ocean, fishing boat captain Christopher Kit Oliver felt his trawling net snag something large and unsettling deep in the waters off Australia. At the time, though, Kit Oliver had no idea what he could have trapped in his brand new $20,000 fishing net. But soon he would. What Oliver's net eventually reeled in off southeast Australia's coast that day nine years ago has bothered him ever since, so much so that he hasn't spoken about it until today. Now at age 77, with his deep-sea fishing years behind him and a couple of heart attacks later, Kit Oliver needs to tell the world of his amazing catch. And I know you're wondering, why has he kept his secret all these years? Well, the baffling thing is that he didn't. He told anybody and everybody that would listen back in 2014. But every government agency he told the story to blew him off, simply telling him it was an impossible tale. But we'll get to that in a minute. As he recounted his experience to a Sydney Morning Herald reporter, he told them that it was a bloody great wing of a big jet airliner. After pausing, as the nine-year-old memory washed over him, he continued, I've questioned myself, I've looked for a way out of this, he says. I wish to Christ I'd never seen the thing. But there was. It was a jet wing. And Oliver is sick and tired of hearing any suggestion that the object was the wing of a small plane and not a jumbo airliner. Oliver knows the difference as a licensed pilot himself when he was a young man who piloted several planes such as Cessnas. Oliver emphasized that this thing was much bigger than anything in the private plane category. After his interview with Oliver, the reporter for the Herald said he contacted a man named George Curie. Curie, the only other person still living among the three past crew members who were on Oliver's 72-foot, 24-meter trawler Vivian Jane, on that day in September or October 2014. Curie spent 42 of his 69 years at sea and he was the engineer and first mate on several of Oliver's boats for over two decades. The two men haven't been in contact for several years. But in a phone interview, former crew member Curie said he knew exactly what the reporter was asking about. Curie said, you've got no idea what trouble we had when we dragged up that wing. It was incredibly heavy and awkward, he added. It stretched out the net and ripped it and it was too big to get up on the deck. As soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. It was obviously a wing or a big part of it from a commercial plane. It was white and obviously not from a military jet or a little plane, and it took us all day to get rid of it. Having spent a day struggling to free the object from the trawler's net, Captain Oliver ordered his crew to cut the net free. And by that time, well into the inky blackness of night, the $20,000 net and whatever it had captured was cast off and sank into the dark of the southern ocean. Oliver said it came to rest at a relatively shallow depth on the sea floor, a few hundred meters beyond the northern lip of a deep submerged volcanic crater. The area is about 55 kilometers, about 34 miles west of the South Australian town of Robe, and about the same distance from shore. But there's a good reason Oliver remembers the exact spot, because it was his secret trawling area for Alfonso fish. He said that spot, the Alfonso fish, among other species, were plentiful deep above the underwater volcanic bowl there. 
But according to the Sydney Morning Herald, the first question that came to the minds of both Oliver and Curie, and the other two crew members as well, was whether the wing could have come from Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370, which disappeared on March 8 of 2014, with 227 passengers and 12 crew members aboard. At the time, the disappearance was one of the world's greatest mysteries when Oliver and his crew were fishing off southeast Australia. And even today, all these years later, the fate of the MH370 and those aboard remains a mystery and the subject of internet conspiracy theorists. Most authorities have since concluded that MH370 crashed somewhere in the southern Indian Ocean. But despite the most expansive sea search in maritime and aviation history, no trace of the plane's location has been found. In 2015 and 2016, several pieces of the plane were found washed up on the beaches of Runyon, an island off the east coast of Africa, and also on the coast of the African nation of Mozambique. However, this whole incident leaves Oliver worrying that skeptics might classify him as a conspiracy theorist nut or just plain crazy for talking about a mysterious jet wing hundreds of kilometers to the east of the area where aviation experts insist that MH370 crashed. That's another reason they've written Oliver off, simply because they refuse to consider their models may be wrong. So instead of searching a different area than the scientists had pinpointed, they just ignored Oliver's pleas to search the area where he said he snagged the wing. But anyone who knows him, and that's just about everyone in Australia's southern trawling industry, knows him as a hard-working, reliable fisherman and a very sane and sober man who has lost and made fortunes on the sea. The Sydney Morning Herald article highlights a story that may explain Oliver's hesitance to speak to the media. Because on March 12, 1990, at about 9 p.m., over 150 kilometers south of Hobart, Oliver was fishing with his big Soviet-built trawler outfitted with a brand new engine that he'd be making payments on for years when he struck a shipping container and unfortunately by around 11 p.m. that evening, his boat and new engine, after a valiant fight by Oliver and his crew, sank to the bottom of the sea. He and his crew were eventually rescued by another fishing trawler. On the way home, when he finally reached cell range, he found out a news reporter had already phoned his wife Stephanie to inform her that he was missing at sea. This enraged Oliver and gave him a disgust for journalists, which deepened when he arrived at Hobart to find himself surrounded by reporters all peppering him with questions wanting to know how he felt. All of which lends context to his decision now to finally go public and confide in a journalist with his very true fishing story of catching MH370's wing, which claimed his $20,000 fishing net. And Oliver remembers exactly where his secret lies under 300 feet of ocean. He retraced it for the Sydney Herald reporter on an electronic chart plotter of a trawler operated by a friend who still fishes those waters. Chart plotters use satellite GPS coordinates overlaid on a map along with other information including depth. These plotters are used by commercial as well as civilian fishermen all over the world to map the ocean floor to aid them in finding fish. Oliver pointed out the spot where he says he dropped the airline's wing. It's at 37 degrees 16 minutes south and 139 degrees 12 minutes east. He said he tried to alert authorities of his find as soon as he returned to port by calling the Australian Maritime Safety Authority. He said that within hours he received a return call from an official. But like I said, they just blew him off insisting without any investigation that he snagged a shipping container that had fallen from a Russian ship in that area off of Robe. However, the Herald said that the maritime agency told them it had no record of speaking with Oliver during that period. So Oliver said they refused to listen to him and he got frustrated and stopped talking about it for a while. However, three years later, it kept eating at him, so he tried again. Oliver wrote an email dated Monday, November 27, 2017, to Ocean Infinity, the company contracted to search for MH370, but came up empty everywhere they looked. The email read, My name is Christopher Oliver. Three years ago, I was operating my deep-sea trawler off-robe in South Australia and was fouled for a day trying to recover my net. 
He wrote that because of the publicity involving MH370, he reported the incident and the authorities informed him that a container had been recently lost in that area. But being so far from the search area, no further interest was shown. Unhooking this object and straining every winch, we managed to get most of the net aboard and tow the object away from our fishing drag and cut the net free in 55 fathoms, about 100 meters of water. A couple of comments, he said. I have trawled for 35 years and this was not a shipping container. Having over the years trawled up all sorts of objects, including aircraft, I am convinced this was an aircraft wing. Please feel free to contact me. Christopher Kit Oliver. He said he received no reply. He was blown off once again. But now in the twilight of his life and with the grief of the MH370 families weighing heavy on his mind, he wants the world to know what he found that day out in the Indian Ocean and that he told all the right people and they simply ignored him. And due to their stubbornness to believe their calculations could be wrong and the old fisherman could be right, Instead of taking a 35-mile boat ride to find out the truth and solve one of the greatest mysteries of all time and bring peace to the families of those lost in the crash, they would rather stick their bureaucratic heads in the sand. So hopefully now, with this news out in the open, some private ocean explorers will take up the cause and settle the mystery that governments refuse to solve. But Maximus, you may ask, why do you think the authorities would just ignore this boat captain's story? Well, I gave it a lot of thought, and I have an opinion, especially regarding the Australian government. Because if Oliver's story is true, that means that MH370 completely overflew the entire continent of Australia without anybody noticing. But what they can't say is that it was too far for the Boeing 777 to travel, because the distance from Kuala Lumpur is roughly about 3,100 nautical miles. But the range of the 777, depending on the variant, is anywhere between 5,500 and 9,290 nautical miles. So the distance isn't a problem. And MH370 had plenty of fuel. So I think it boils down to the stubbornness and fear of embarrassment, not science. Yet all they have to do is take a day trip to the site, either to prove or disprove this man's story. So personally, yes, I do believe Captain Kid Oliver and he may have actually found MH370. But the more important question is, do you believe him? Do you think it's worth a short boat ride to find out, or do you think the old man is just a kook? Let me know down below. Well, that's all I have for now. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification tab so you can find out whenever we release new content, so you never miss a new Maximus video. And until next time, yeah, this is Maximus.